I do think with activity and a little bit of carnitine, you can mitigate a lot of these insulin resistance problems from growth hormone. And that's why you don't really see insulin resistance with guys that are physically active because they take care of the free form fatty acids and they're, they're not always glycogen loaded. They don't have a boatload of saturated fat in their skeletal muscle. Um, so their insulin sensitivity is sustained even on higher doses of growth. And I just, you see that time and time again, not again, not that there's no place for the UGL stuff. I think there is, right? There's supply issues of pharma, there's major cost issues with pharma stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and for most guys, they don't, just don't need to run that huge of a dose of GL, GH. So no, four to five, you know, I use kind of where most people. Bit, what does it really matter? Yeah. But I when the guys are... start to creep it up, I think that's when both you see the issue, the health issues go and you see lack of results. Really, the guy's using 10 IUs of UGL growth and he doesn't look pretty crazy. GH is junk. I don't care what yeah. the test shows. Because at that dose, you should look noticeably different day after day. You should look full as a house 24-7. Yeah. And when fat, you, your pants should be falling off you. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I guess I see it in the, the comments on the last one. We were asked about like speaking about sub-Q and IM growth hormone. Do you want me to? And obviously the... Yeah. Obviously, the, the serum level and when we look at the studies of 10 IU IM versus 10 IU sub Q, yeah, what I interjected with as a comment was when you get a peak plasma level of a drug, the drug's residency time, so you get a big massive spike and the drug residency time is only three hours. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've got a super physiological serum level. If you do it sub Q, you have a smaller peak level for a prolonged re residency yeah. time of 10 mm -hmm. hours. When you compare the two, as in the area under the curve, which is the amount of space underneath that peak, mm -hmm. they're roughly the same between a sub Q and an IM shot. That IM gets in and gets out. But the other thing that you have to consider is a plasma level is how much of the drug is in your bloodstream not inside your, your cell. cell so the, yeah. the amount that's inside your bloodstream that can interact with a growth hormone receptor what's more important is the igf1 outcome yes yeah. mm -hmm. and again when you compare the two the im versus sub q igf response whilst one is an immediate super physiological increase overall igf1 mm -hmm. conversion levels are pretty much the same between sub q and im other than sub q has a more balanced circadian output so if you want to no doubt if you want to have super physiological levels of growth hormone all throughout the day without relying on circadian pattern you could do im hmm. shots of growth hormone every three or four hours get a big spike but who's gonna so no but well, well, who's gonna im shot eight to ten i use a growth hormone every four hours of the day well, can i give you three reasons why that doesn't make sense so one, you don't want to be multi-dosing it, right? Because then you're going to become insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. That's why every pharmaceutical brand of growth hormone, the dose is one bolus at night before bed. Mm -hmm. It is nothing to, you're not supposed to be taking it throughout the day. And for what you said also, so you get these spikes, but you're not, you're not getting this, you, uh, you get a much nicer curve when it's taken on big bolus. The other two issues is growth hormone is a cytokine. The receptor doesn't translate, the growth hormone receptor doesn't translocate into the cell. If you inject growth hormone into a cell, the body senses it as a cytokine attack and your immune system will destroy up to 20% of it. So especially mm -hmm. now you're using a generic growth hormone, which say it's 50% weaker than a pharma growth, and then you stick it in your muscle. Now you got another 20% that you just lost, right? So again, it doesn't matter how fast it peaks. If it's not doing anything, it has to go sub-Q. Peptides should always go sub-Q. They should never be ejected in muscle. You wouldn't stick insulin in your muscle. That's, that's just not the way to use it unless you, you want to go into a coma. That's what would occur mm. if you start using that IM. But you don't, you don't inject, you don't do growth hormone IM. Yeah, I think what, what I was coming at from mine then is like the absorption profile there. Even though one is longer acting or, or slower releasing, the actual amount of plasma growth hormone you get from an IM shot versus a sub-Q, whilst they're on different time scales, the overall growth hormone response is still in line with 10 IUs being administered. Just one rapidly hits you and the other matches your like 10 to 12 hour release into your system. Yeah. Isn't there like the growth hormone uh, binding protein that's a truncated receptor, right? So it, 
growth hormone uh, doesn't seven hour, yeah, of course. So it growth hormone doesn't have to dissociate from these binding proteins. It can actually bind to the recep uh, the cell surface. Yeah, some depends each binding receptor. Yeah, each binding each is has a different destination. So and that's also when you're testing serum IGF, that's really all you're seeing is the bound stuff. That doesn't right. mean it's going into muscle. Again, it, it depends what's going into muscle that's acting on the muscle, not going into mm. muscle. What's interacting with the growth hormone receptor on the muscle. Right. Um, it's like certain binding proteins will send it to the kidneys, certain to the bones. Like that's that's what the issue is, right? Because in acromegaly, you see these IGF numbers of you know thousand, two thousand. These guys aren't muscular or lean. They have massive hands and deformed heads, mm. right? And big feet. It's not those binding proteins aren't. It's not advantageous to have them bind to those. And the higher the estrogen level, the more binding proteins are produced. Again, it's right. your body's way of protecting what's going on. Nature doesn't want females to become overly muscular, muscled. Yeah. You know. Well, but so so you can see that in my wife now, right? She's pregnant, estradiol sky high, undetectably high, growth hormone levels also undetectably high. Didn't gain an ounce of muscle. Yeah, of course. Why she eats well, more protein estrogen, than before. If estrogen was anabolic, <laughs> people would just inject estrogen. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Yeah. Unless your estrogen is low. And then you can always take the animal, you know, it's not the end of the world. To take a load of the animal. Anabolic. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's anabolic. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is between these bolus injections and the sub-Q injections, if there's also some sort of change on how the growth hormone binds to the growth hormone binding proteins and, and limits the rate of anabolism that way. That's what I was always wondering. Yeah. I mean, even... You know, some of the discussion would be around an IM injection to a child versus a sub-Q to a child, but more so sub-Q because of its pharmacokinetics being across that 10-hour period, you're giving it for growth hormone deficiency before mm. bed to mimic what would be produced in deep sleep. Yeah. Mm. And so, to prevent blocking of glucose uptake as well, right? If you take it in the morning, now you're blocking your ability to eat, yeah. right? And the mm -hmm. bodybuilders compensate by then taking insulin. And just this like vicious cycle. I mean, you just don't use your growth hormone like that. You <laughs> You're blunt forcing it with insulin because and people ask me, from which dose of growth hormone do I need to start taking insulin? And you don't need to. You just need to time your growth hormone intelligently and do a lot bit of activity to improve your insulin sensitivity. Because if, if the free-form fatty acids inhibit insulin substrate one, then insulin doesn't do anything. Adding more insulin will make you more insulin resistant. Exactly. Which is, you know, counterintuitive. And I think, well, that, you know, this is this is where basal insulin, if you're not taking growth hormone and you're using basal insulin to take some offload to pancreas, like 20 IUs, that would be your basal response in the mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. For a longevity perspective, perhaps we covered this before. But as soon as you start adding in growth hormone where you're potentially becoming insulin resistant, this more, uh, this increased insulin from your basal use is just going to create more problems. So you don't, yeah. as soon as you start seeing HbA and C issues or glucose sensitivity issues of growth hormone, you have two choices. You either lower your growth hormone dose or you stop it, yeah. correct the insulin sensitivity problem and restart yeah. again. Yeah. I think that was... You know, when people ask me about why I choose like three or four days for my training days, it's for that exact reason. On my rest days, I'm giving my glucose tolerance a break. Hmm. I do think with activity and a little bit of carnitine, you can mitigate a lot of these insulin resistance problems from growth hormone. And that's why you don't really see insulin resistance with guys that are physically active because they take care of the free form fatty acids and they're, they're not always glycogen loaded. They don't have a boatload of saturated fat in their skeletal muscle. Um, so their insulin sensitivity is sustained even on higher doses of growth. Right? And then especially if you take metabolics with that, the SLU and the MOTC and whatever, um, I mean, you can eat a boatload of carbs and take a boatload of GH and still stay insulin sensitive. Mm -hmm. Until, 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 until you do overdo the carbs and take away the protein and go with yeah. fruit only. Yeah. Uh, this must be a bit too much. Imagine if you do a long acting growth hormone and the uh, uh, sugar fasting. <laughs> We're just some putting it. And then BAM 15, bro, yeah. throw the DMP at it. <laughs> <laughs> to offset 
<laughs> I've said the free for four years. Yeah, I think we're we're heading into another, I think, renaissance of mitochondrion coupling with BAM fifteen becoming more available. What was once like a a forbidden chemical, um, it's slowly becoming a bit more mainstream. That people throw out know, the BAM fifteen in the mod scene there. So you and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You don't understand how this shit works. I, yeah, but this study showed that it doesn't have that much free radicals. Yeah, but you're, you're fucking dumbass. <laughs> I mean, I'm all for experimentation, I, but I got to draw the line somewhere, man. What I about think, adipotide? If you want to kill your kidneys, go for it. I, I think like DNP, there's probably some intelligent scenario to BAM-15 and mitochondrion coupling. But again, you have to really understand what you're doing in the grand scheme of it by uncoupling and basically producing a lot of unspent energy by your body. Um, that I think there's, there's other ways that can be done. That's not to say you can't use it, but I'm sure we could design a protocol where it's perfectly safe and very effective. I just don't want to. I mean, in the past, I'm gatekeeping that fucking information because <laughs> I already looked at it and I know exactly how to do it correctly. And I just don't want to, I got to draw like, a line somewhere, man. Just like high uh, protocols. I know exactly how to do it. When you're 12 years old to 16 years old, I know exactly how to gain a foot. Just going to gatekeep it. Because I don't want to be responsible for somebody doing it wrong and then their kids end up fucked, you know? So there's limits to what we can do, man. I think, yeah, no matter how intelligent, sometimes the chemistry is best kept to ourselves. Yeah, and just otherwise ask the B team. Right, there's a B team of educators out there. <laughs> Just ask them. They'll gladly for a hundred dollar consultation. Sure, man. Yeah. They'll gladly tell you fuck up your kids or fuck up your health. They'll gladly do it. It's Just on me. Yeah. Uh, let's let let's uh like while we're on the air. Y yeah. Shit like that. Yeah. Let's see what this comes yeah. up with. Play, well. <laughs> Uh, I'm on no name BT calling here. Dean. <laughs> no, no, please. please yeah, just ask, so the funny thing is, if you want protocols like this, you just ask ChatGPT. You don't even need to add, ask an educator because ChatGPT will write out a protocol for height protocols, which is pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. Especially if you ask perplexity with a paid version where it integrates Grok and the latest GPTs and all together. Uh, it, that's it's, what I have it's, here. It's, it's pretty fucking good, man. Let's see what it says here. I've asked it based on what I know. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's not bad. Need some nuance, need some dietary adjustments, but it's it's not bad, man. Five more years, nobody watches the anabolic round table. You just type it into perplexity and then get exactly what you need. Hmm. And they're like, these fuckers just said <laughs> they were limiting the information. Wow, this is this is scary. I know, right? Not that I'm condoning anyone goes and and does this, um, but what this is? Whoa! Where all three of us can retire from consultations in a few years. That's what I do now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kurt's got a, a yeah. busy day, so uh, let's wrap it up here. It's been two hours, guys. It's been long enough. I hope you got what you paid for <laughs> the anabolic round table. Uh, next month, uh, middle of August, mm -hmm. July. July. Hopefully, I'll be July. a dad. Hopefully, I'll be a daddy by the time. Jesus oh, fucking Christ! <laughs> My wife's like, "Yeah, I'm due." So when? <laughs> yeah, soon. I've been waiting like two weeks. I think I gotta wait another week. But next time, I'll be a daddy, and then I'll join you two in the sun of uh, being the most handsome anabolic daddies on the planet. So any parting words for this episode? Don't do a uh, fruit fasting. Don't do <laughs> Trevor Groom up and Garrett the Smup. Yeah. Just take TRT plus growth hormone, shut the fuck up and maybe avoid the ones with Paloxima 188 so you can prevent kidney damage. I think that's the takeaway for this episode. And again, guys, this is, there's no Trevor Groom up in these cannons. And it's not bad for, you know, having not done crazy cycles in a while. Still 230 pounds. If you're, if you're less than 230 pounds thinking about these compounds, then I got news for you. Unless you're I got all this. 
Yeah, yeah. Just get billionaire status first, and then um, I'll, I'll source it for you. No problems. You can find all their social media links down below. Kurt's got a forum. Dean's got a website. They are available for consultations. These guys know a fuckload. Some some things more than me. That's why you get them on every week.